Another important topic in limits concerns what are called one-sided limits, and this occurs in a number of different cases where we might only be able to approach a given value from one direction or another. So we might have a situation where we can only approach a given value of x from above. So let's say we want to know what happens to f of x as x approaches an a value from above, or we also would say that this is from the right because we are looking at the approach to the number from the right side if you think about a number line. And we'd indicate this limit as x approaches a from above, there's a superscripted plus there of our f of x. And we might consider what that limit is. Or we might also consider what happens as x approaches a from below. And again, if you think about this on the number line, we might also be looking at that x approaching a from the left. And we write it this way, the limit as x approaches a superscripted minus from below of f of x. Now, it's an important point to make, which is that these are one-sided limits. We're either approaching A from above or we're approaching A from below. But if we want to take a look at the limit as X approaches A, we have an unqualified limit and we need to have a common value of the two limits. But if those two limits are not equal, then the limit itself does not exist. So if our limit as x approaches a from above and a limit as x approaches a from below. If they are equal, our unqualified limit is the common value. Otherwise, we have no limit. For example, let's talk about the limit as x gets close to 4 from above of the square root of x minus 4. And while we're at it, let's see if we can defend our answer numerically. So here we're approaching for from above, and so we want to consider what happens to square root of x minus 4 for x values that are getting close to 4, but always staying above 4. Now, if you actually look at the function, you'll see why we can't actually approach 4 from below. If x is less than 4, we're taking the square root of a negative number, which for real variable calculus is undefined. Now, we want to defend our answer numerically, and it might not be a bad idea. Let's actually start with a numerical approach. So we'll consider values of x that are close to 4, always staying a little bit more than 4, and what the corresponding value of the square root of x minus 4 is. So I might try 4.01, substituting that in, and I get that 0.3162 is the approximate value. Or I might get a little closer to 4, try 4.01. Again, still a little bit more than 4. And I'll substitute that in. And after all the dust clears, 0.1 as my value of the function. Again, trying a closer value, 4.001. And finding my value, 0.0316. So if x is close to 4, but always staying a little bit more than 4, then here are my function values. Now, it might not be entirely clear what's happening to the function at that point, so let's try an algebraic approach. As x gets close to 4 from above, square root x minus 4 gets close to square root of 4 minus 4, which is square root of 0, or just 0. And that suggests that as x gets close to 4 from above, x square root of 4, square root of x minus 4, is 0, and our table tends to support that. For x values that are close to 4, our values of square root of x minus 4 are also fairly close to 0. So if I want to give a complete answer to the question, find the limit, and also defend the answer numerically, I want to include both the table and the work that leads to the value of the limit. Now these one-sided limits are particularly useful for functions that are defined piecewise. And what that means is why I have a function f of x equals, well sometimes it's going to use one particular rule and sometimes in another piece it'll use a different rule. So in this case my function uses the rule 3x minus 2 if x is greater than or equal to 4. And if it's going to use the rule x squared minus 6 if x is less than 4. And I can still try to find the limit as x gets close to 4 of my function. Now notice that the rule changes at 4. There's a break at x equal to 4 where we switch from one rule to the other. And since that's where we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 4, then what we will have to do is we should take a look at the one-sided limits as x gets close to 4. 
So we'll start off by finding the limit as x gets close to 4, but always staying above it to f of x. Now, x is getting too close to 4 from above, which means that our x values are always going to be greater than 4, which means that my function, if x is greater than 4, I'm going to use this top line here. So my function, for the purposes of finding this limit, is going to look like 3x minus 2. So I'll include that in as my actual function value, and now I can apply the same logic as before. As x gets close to 4 but always staying above it, this expression 3x minus 2 looks like it's getting close to 3 times 4 minus 2, looks like it's getting close to 10. Likewise, I can also take a look at the limit as x gets close to 4, but always staying a little bit below it. And if I'm a little bit below 4, if I'm less than 4, then my function is x squared minus 6. So I am going to look at the limit as x approaches 4 from below of x squared minus 6. And as x gets close to 4, my expression gets close to 4 squared minus 6, also equal to 10. And the important observation to make, the one-sided limits have the same value. The limit as x approaches 4 from above is 10. The limit as x approaches 4 from below, also 10. So the unqualified limit exists and is equal to the common value. And again, just as a note on syntax, the proper and complete answer to the question is going to be the portion shown in green. We want to show what the limit as we approach x equal to 4 from above, the limit as we approach x equal to 4 from below, and make an observation that the limits agree. So the limit without plus, without minus, that limit is going to be equal to the common value. Well, let's take a look at another one. So again, I'm going to define this function piecewise, and f of x has three different formulas depending on whether x is greater than 2, equal to 2, or less than 2. And I'm interested in finding the limit as x approaches 2 of my function. So again, my function breaks at 2, and I'm interested in finding the limit at 2, which means I'm going to have to find the one-sided limits. So let's start off with the wrong way of doing this. So we might just plug in x equals 2 into the function. At x equals 2, the line says f of x is equal to 7. So the wrong answer is that as x gets close to 2, my function value gets close to 7. And this is wrong for several reasons. And the key reason is that the limit as x approaches 2 is not what actually happens at x equals 2. But again, what we're looking at is what happens to f of x as x gets close to 2. So let's try to do this correctly. So the function breaks at 2, so we'll find the one-sided limits. So we'll start off with the limit as x gets close to 2, but always staying a little bit above 2. And my function, if x is a little bit more than 2, looks like 2x minus 5. So that limit is going to be the limit as x approaches 2 of 2x minus 5, and this expression gets close to the value 2 times 2 minus 5 gets close to the value negative 1. Likewise, I can take a look at the limit as x gets close to 2, this time staying a little bit below 2. And again, if x is less than 2, my function looks like 1 minus x. So I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 2 from below of 1 minus x, and that looks like it's going to head towards 1 minus 2, looks like it's heading towards negative 1. And now the limit from above, the limit from below, have the same value, negative 1, so the unqualified limit is going to be the common value. Now note that in this particular case, we didn't have to find a numerical support for it. The question didn't ask us to find the numerical support for it, um, but it did ask to find the limit as x approaches 2. And it's important to note that in this case, the complete answer is going to be the portion that is shown in green. Finding the limit as we approach from above, the limit as we approach from below, and the observation that the two limits are the same, and so the limit itself is going to be the common value. So we'll take a look at one more example here. So this time we have yet another piecewise function. And again, here our break is at x equal to 4. And we want to find the limit as x gets close to 4 of our function. 
So we'll find our one-sided limits, starting with as x gets close to 4 but staying above it. If x is bigger than 4, I'm going to use this line here, x squared, as my function expression. And as x gets close to 4, that gets close to 4 squared, or 16. I'll look at the limit as x approaches 4 from below. I'm a little bit less than 4, and that means I'm going to use the top line here. My function expression is going to be 2x. And as x gets close to 4, that looks like it's getting close to 8, and we have a problem. Uh, the limit from above is 16. The limit from below is 8. And the one-sided limits do not agree which means that there is no unqualified limit. So we do want to say something to that effect. Since the limits are not equal, then the limit itself does not exist. And again, the complete answer to this question is going to be shown in green. Our limit from above, our limit from below, and some observation that because the limits are different, the unqualified limit does not exist.